And uh, my name is Daniel Silk. I'm an independent political analyst. I talk about global trends, and I want to share for you, at least with images, some of the core global trends that are affecting us every single moment of our life from a political and economic point of view. And if your company, your employees, your corporate, the overall philosophy does not understand some of these tectonic shifts that are occurring in the world right now, you are behind the curve. Of course, you need leadership guidance, but you also need to understand the news events that are shaping our future and will shape our working world for the rest of our lives. It's a very telling picture behind me. It's a picture of the Chinese Red Army proudly looking over their new aircraft carrier. It signifies the emergence of China, the re-emergence of China as a critical and powerful global power. China was powerful. For 1,500 years after the birth of Christ, China and India were the two most powerful countries on this planet. China's back in action. India's back in action. The BRICS countries of the world, of which we are now part of, and having a critical conference in Durban uh, over the course of the, in March. Why is the BRICS countries important? Because the power game, political power, economic power, is shifting slowly away from the Western nations of this world that we've grown up with for many of us in this room, and are shifting to new emerging societies. Almost 60% of global growth that has occurred in the world this last year came from the 3 million people who live, 3 billion people who live in the BRICS economies alone. That's a map of Australia. Last week, this map became significant because Australia's average temperature, its weather, its temperature, was 40 degrees Celsius for the entire country last week. It was an all-time record, and the Australian Weather Department had to produce a brand new map with new extra deep crimson purple color coding to signify how hot it's getting. Climate change is an issue and a key global risk, and your company has to understand it in order to alleviate or at least to attempt to build in cost-saving measures into the future. I don't want to scare you but I want to make you aware and I want to make your company aware of it. Shoes. I like retail, my friends. A lot of my customers are in the retail environment. They want to know global trends. Eh, reasonably nice pair of shoes. 20 years ago, that pair of shoes would have been made near where I live in Woodstock in Cape Town at our now defunct shoe factories. Last year, this pair of shoes might have been made in China. In five years' time, this pair of shoes will be made in your own home. It'll be made in a 3D printer. And listen, you heard it here first. The effects of 3D digitization when it comes to manufacturing articles are going to change the world of work, going to change labor relations into the future. And I hope our trade unions in South Africa are well aware of the impact of that little microwave oven device that's going to take manufacturing out of the factory floor and put it into our homes. It's coming, my friends. You have been warned. One of the great... I suppose aspects of living in South Africa is that we can piggyback onto the excitement of the African continent and the growth story in Africa. Ten years ago, The Economist magazine ran a cover story about Africa, and they referred to Africa as the hopeless continent. That's what they called us. And ten years later, they ran another cover story about Africa. Suddenly, we've gone from uh, hopeless to Africa rising. Africa's growth story is superb. Seven out of the top ten growth economies for the next five years are going to be African economies. And of course, it brings me to our own home environment here in South Africa. And we've seen substantial change just in the last month or so. I talk about this in a presentation that I do about South Africa's political future. I look at the global environment, but obviously I look at the impact, impact of Cyril Ramaphosa. Will he be a loyal second in command? Will, in fact, he usurp? The presidency? Will we see a change in the presidency over the course of the next few years as Ramaphosa becomes more of the front face of South Africa and Jacob Zuma takes a more ceremonial role or perhaps even a more backseat role as we move into much more competitive times? South Africa's political future is very dear to my heart and near to my heart, and I talk about that extensively. 